guys and welcome to Turtle Talk. I'm on banner now, I made it myself, I'm like a pro YouTuber. So in this episode I'm going to be discussing the second episode of the first season, A Better Mousetrap. Before I start I'm just going to give a quick summary, so if you don't want spoilers, not that there are very many, but if you don't want spoilers then just don't, why are you, why are you watching this? I'm literally discussing episodes. You shouldn't watch this if you don't want spoilers. If you're watching along, or if you've seen this series already, then you know the first episode we was left off with the guy's lair being destroyed by these mysterious robots. Where did they come from? What is their purpose? Why are they such assholes? Who knows? I know, and you know, if you watch this episode, they're assholes because they were created by Baxter Stockman. So the episode starts off with the guys they found their new lair, and they're fixing it up, ready to make it all nice and homey. You have Don and Mikey in the lair with Splinter, the new one, where Mikey's setting up these televisions. There's so many televisions. Where do you focus? There's just so many televisions. And decide what to watch? I need more power, Captain. The turtle cave must be set for maximum entertainment potential. And you have Don working on this one robot because he's trying to figure out where it came from. They should be back any minute now. He wants to see where this robot came from. He wants to know what it's made out of because that's, that's just who Don is. You have Raph and Leo over in the old lair that's in shambles, crumbling, dead. their stuff, scavenging whatever is left of their old home, and they get on this Brad sewer slider and get back and meet with the others, where Mikey turns on the TV to this news broadcast and we are introduced for the first time to Baxter Stockman and April O'Neil. My lab assistant, Miss April O'Neil. Now without making the summary too detailed, later on you are introduced to the fact that Stockman is working with Shredder. Our first field test was... Was a complete failure. Or Rokusaki, or that mysterious man that we saw in the first episode. Who is he? I don't know, but he killed a guy. So April overhears this plan. Whatever's going on, she overhears Stockman talking to the Shredder guy. This weird guy, this deep-voiced guy. For your sake. And so April's thinking, someone's up here. Someone's up with this guy. I'm not trusting this guy, Stockman. He's talking to some shady dude. I don't know who he is. He has a deep voice. He was threatening him. So I'm gonna check this out. And so she goes to check it out when Stockman leaves. That's what she does. Now, let's find out what kind of plan you've been cooking up with those mousers, Dr. Stockman. And while April is sneaking into his office, trying to just snoop it around, you know, the reporter side, obviously. That's totally why she was snooping. Maybe. While she's doing that, Don fixes up this mouse and robot and the guys are following it all around the sewers. Watch your step here guys. Don't want to end up as turtle soup. Causing all kinds of damage. It's just not really a fun time for them. It's a fun time for us watching it. It's just fun. And then, when April gets into the mouser factory, she sees this army of mouser robots and she definitely knows at that point, at that point, she 100% knows something is up. This is not normal. This is overkill. I don't care how bad the city's rodent problem is. This is serious overkill. But then Stockman comes in because April wasn't paying attention. She hit off a sensor and Stockman tries to kill her. I'm afraid I can't let you live, Miss O'Neill. You've seen far too much already and, well, let's just say I have trust issues. So April's chased all through the sewers. The guys are following this mouse robot. Raph decides to kill the only one they have left, completely destroys it. Just make sure we leave one <laughs> intact. Now they don't know where to go, but they run into April. And this is where this, this episode ends. They meet April, April passes out, Mike picks her up. And as everyone should know, this famous line. Can I keep her? That's the summary of the episode. Now I'm just going to kind of briefly talk about some of my favorite parts of the episode. So one of my favorite scenes is pretty much any scene with April. Love April. 
Love April. Especially her girl power scenes when she's like, okay, I'm not dying here. Okay, I know something's up. She's just wonderful. She hits that mouser with a fire extinguisher. <laughs> She's like, yeah, I got this. But then she doesn't have it. But then she kind of has it. You can run, Miss O'Neill, but you cannot hide from my mousers. Okay. My favorite animation sequences, which can also be my favorite scenes, kind of, especially the scene with Leo and Raph in the sewer slider. It's a great bro moment. If you like especially Leo and Raph bro moments, that's a good moment to watch. So I really like that sequence because with the sewer slider, you know Don made it. You can see he made this vehicle that can support all of this weight and can just go through the sewers without touching anything and just hovering around doing all this crazy business. <laughs> So take it nice and oh! So this episode, second episode, you already know Don is a fucking genius. He is a genius. You know someone that can make something like that? Because I don't. Especially with parts from a junkyard. Like, where is he getting his parts? Not from some big machine company. No, he's probably going to the dump, getting up all the scrap metal, making a fucking hover car. And my second little favorite animation sequence, it's not a long sequence, it's actually really short. I just really like because there are very few animation moments that are just to me this smooth and just beautiful. And this one in this episode was when Raph threw his sigh at Splinter and Splinter just totally like fucking get this out of my face. <laughs> Those were my top favorites. Some little honorable mention moments are definitely bro moments, any and all bro moments. Always honorable mentions. Always. How about the Sewer of Solitude? Terrapin Station? The School for Gifted Reptiles? The Hall of Ninjustice? Great. Great reason to watch this show. If you're watching this, trying to figure out if you want to watch 2K3 or not, fucking watch it. If you don't have to watch it all right now, you probably will if you like it. Which you probably will like it. But if you just kind of want to keep up with me, you can rewatch each episode after this. Probably on Friday. Hopefully on Friday. College is starting to get up my ass. Hopefully Friday I'll be watching the third episode. You can watch with me and then wait for my little thing so you'll know kind of what I'm talking about. Another little honorable mention thing is you had Raph getting all up in Leo's face in the first episode. And in this episode, you have Leo getting all up in Raph's face. Master Splinter said we stay put. Look, I'll go through you if I have to. I'd like to see you try. I like this. And I also know that a lot of you will like this. If you insist. You sexy for my love, love's going to leave. So this episode was really great because it, whatever was introduced in the first episode with the Mousers and kind of with Shady Oroku Saki guy, kind of get a follow up and like a zoom in, a zooming in of this certain part of the plot, the Mousers. The Mousers came in, destroyed their home. Without the Mousers, we wouldn't have the first episode. So obviously they're going to continue with the Mouser plot and we get introduced to Baxter Stockman and April O'Neil and it's great. I think it flows really well, this whole plot thing. I think I like it. And so this is the first episode in the series that is a to be continued episode. The second episode, to be continued, could be good, could be bad. I think, I, I like it. I mean obviously the second episode you're going to want a little more closure, but they're introducing this huge plot here, not really huge plot. Stockman is a huge part of the plot. Mouser's not so much. But it's this plot that they're trying to introduce to you, and now they've introduced another character, April O'Neil. And now that it's a to-be-continued episode, you know that in the next episode, it's gonna be a lot of April. <laughs> it's so awkward. It's so awkward. So yeah, this episode had a lot of action in it, and it was really focused on just furthering the plot and not really much character development. <laughs> That's about it for this episode. Like or subscribe if you want to. Feels weird saying that. Maybe I'm not really a YouTuber yet. And if you want, you can follow me on Tumblr or Twitter. I've made a Twitter now. Lord help us all. And you just subscribe to keep updated on videos. You can watch the series along with me. 
and that's about it. Stay tuned for this week for the turtle count where I count all the things that you guys asked me to count in this episode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bye. No, I'm not done talking. You're distracted. Don't come up in my train unless and be distracted like a little bitch. I think people can hear me talking. Go away. Then I'll eat it. I'm totally eating it. I'm totally done playing with the chocolate chip cookies. I'm just, I'm just gonna eat it in front of the camera. <laughs> So, yeah, that's about it, and...